Village is the game. You might have seen it where there's a bunch of graveyards and you basically put peasants out to yeah. work in the fields thematically, and then they die. Thematically, this game is incredible. This game had the best like mechanic theme uh, synergy that I've seen in a long ass time. Yep, right? send peasants it into was... the field to do work and then the plague comes and kills some of them and they go into graves. Right, so basically there's a village. You are a family of people who work and live in the village, sort of like Agricola, but you're, you know, right? You're, it, it, it's a more of a shared space than Agricola, right? Then, you know, the, right? And on your turn, you sort of, you know, you put your guys out there to work the different places in the village. It's like, oh, you go visit church. You go work in the craftsman's workshop. You go traveling around to other villages and see what's there. You go try to, you know, grow in politics and maybe become the mayor or some shit, right? You tell your, go farm, we need food. Go to the marketplace and sell some shit. We got shit we got to sell, right? We just made some shit, let's sell it. And you tell your people what to do. But over time, your family gets fucking old because they're old as, you know, and you make babies, of course. And plague. Yep. Yeah, but this plague... And people get old and die. So when they die, they sort of, if they're awesome enough, they go into the history book of the village to be remembered by the villagers for, you know, and there's actually a little book and you put the dead people into the book. And if they, if the book is full, then they go to unmarked graves. Unmarked graves. Or if they're not worthy of being in the book. Yeah. uh, They go in unmarked graves. Now, the game has a sort of economy, kind of like Agricola and all these other games, where you're placing workers, they're getting cubes, you're spending those cubes in other places to do stuff, you've got a bunch of places you can level people up, each of the areas of the game is really well self-contained, really well explained, makes sense. The game's just kind of simple after you actually play it. Yeah, basically, you, when you put your workers out, each space you can put a worker has cubes allotted there. And when you put a worker, you get a cube. So what'll happen is a place will have like an orange cube and a black cube. So it's like, oh, I put my guy here, I do the action for that space, I take the orange cube. Now only one more person can go there this round. If they go there, they must take the black cube. Black cube's bad. That's which plague. is a bad. It's a plague cube. It's not a useful cube like the orange one. So it's like you sort of have to decide, well, I want a pink cube, but I don't want to do the action that the where the pink cubes are right now. I want to do the action where the orange cubes are. So it forces you to make some, you know, slightly tricky normal board game decisions. Now, interestingly, you have to keep going until all the cubes get picked up. So eventually it's all black cubes and people are like, ah. Well, you also sort of want to take the black cubes, right? Uh... It's not necessarily bad to have your people die off because then you can get into the book first. That is a way of scoring points and a legitimate strategy. Also, I think the game ends when the book fills, right? Now, that is actually a problem I had with the game's theme. The game, the way it's mechanically set up, you feel like you want to delay and avoid death. That yeah, you want to, the, the less you die, the more people you have on the board doing things, the more time you have to spend actions collecting victory points from the board. But if people die, sooner you get more victory points by being more prominent, well-known ancestors in the history of the village. So how do you balance that? This person, if they keep working, can get five more points. But if they die now, I can get four points. Now, thus my but problem I'll also with the be theme. blocking someone if I do that. The game on your turn, like you can spend actions, you move this clock around, and someone dies every time it goes around. The problem is that all the mechanics of the game feel like you're avoiding death, but intentionally spending actions to kill your, your guys is a huge part of the strategy. Mm-hmm. A huge part. I was regularly intentionally trying to die as fast as possible well, to beat Scott into the graveyard. Early in the game, I was trying not to die because I basically wanted to get a setup. Yep, right? and I said, fuck that, die, die, die. And I basically picked, you know, I was like, which part of the game should I, I was like, I'm going to focus on getting points from like a single source because they, they, it's one of those games where if you keep focusing on one area, you get more and more stuff from that area. Yeah, As there's opposed, very... It doesn't encourage diversification like Agricola, it encourages specification. There's very little reason to diversify and you're pretty much punished for doing it. Right, so it's like I basically did the bare minimum in every place and I maximized traveling. Why did I choose traveling? I didn't calculate how much points things are worth in you know which area would be the best to specialize in i philosophically like the theme of traveling like yeah get out of this peasant ass village and make something of yourself. yeah i saw you go in there and i ignored <laughs> that entire part of the game which and made I, it easy i almost maxed it out yeah and i counted and i realized if you had maxed it out it wouldn't account for even half the points I would get just doing the trading. Yeah, you were doing the marketplace, which I could have specialized in as well. And the marketplace, way more points. Way better than freaking traveling. Also, I maxed out the church. 
I did some church. You too. tried the church. I also I did more town hall. Also, I ignored the town hall mostly. Town hall was pretty good actually, but yeah, if I played it again, I would basically fight for the freaking workshops and the marketplace and fuck all, and only do the other shit. Also, keep in mind the workplace and the the workshops and the marketplace sort of grease the wheels of everything else. So if you focus on those, doing the other things becomes a little bit easier. Yep. Like if you have wagons from doing all that shit, it's just way easier to travel because you have wagons. The game's fun, and I would actually recommend it for most board game people I know. Yeah. I don't want to buy it, and I don't really want to play it again because it feels too simple. I feel right. like if I play it's this... It's one of those lower-level board games, like in the Settler's level, and it's like we personally have moved beyond that, but if you're still down there in Settler's land, where like Settler's is a good game for you, I think this might actually be a better intro to Euro game than... This is a better intro to games like Kalis... This goes in between, I think, Carcassonne and Kalis. Like, you play Carcassonne, you play Settlers, you don't, you're not ready to jump to Kalis, Puerto Rico. You, village goes right in the middle, perfect game for the people who are at that level of Euro gaming. You know, it's, it's clean, it's fun, the theme is amazing with the dead people. Yep. And also, like, here's right. an example, the, get it, like, the game limits you, like, you can go get grain, but you can only get so much, but you can buy a thing that'll let you get more grain, and... The game does not punish you heavily for not being crazily optimized. Like in Agricola, if you fuck up with your food, you're fucked. It's true. In this game, fucking up is not nearly as directly bad. Yeah, it's like, what's the worst you can do? Some of your people die sooner. Like a guy who would have been useful, who was maybe, you know, maybe a guy was hanging out in a workshop. He was living there and he was going to help you produce wagons really fast. But he died because he was the oldest person and you accidentally had to take plague cubes because you miscalculated Okay, now he's in the craftsmanship book and he got a lot of points. But it's like send a guy to get some grain. You've got some grain now. You can you can get two grain at a time. You can only hold five anyway. So it limits the amount of calculation you need to do for moderately successful directional heuristics. Yep, and a lot of times there just aren't that many choices because as the cubes disappear, it's like, okay, you have to put a guy. You have one. You have a guy. You can put him either in the traveling or in the church. Uh, I guess it's the church. Okay. You know, a lot of simple decisions. There's not a lot of tough decisions like Agricola has. So, yeah, super fun, but I probably won't ever play it again, except maybe in polite company if someone else busts it out. Yeah, it's just sort of, you know, fun, sort of simple. Uh, you know, I wouldn't, like, seek it out. I wouldn't pull it out of a library, but it's cute. Not bad. Not, you know, not like I wouldn't avoid it like I would, say, Innovation. Or uh, Skyline. Uh, no, or was ground it? Floor. Ground, ground Floor. Ground Floor. Skyline's the dice one. Ground Which is also meh, but Ground Floor was awful. Yeah. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brand OK for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs>